I'm sorry about that coat, my darling. But don't you worry. I'll make it up to you this afternoon in some other way. Mm, okay. Mm. Goodbye. Uh, just one tiny thing, darling. Yes? You've forgotten the coat. No, I haven't. I think what Mr. Bodley means... Yes, shut up. Yes. What Mr. Bodley means is you can't have the coat. But you promised it to me, Gilly. Yeah, but there's a slight difficulty now. I see no difficulties. I simply walk out through the door. Yeah, but what will you say when you come face to face with your husband? I say, hello, Harry. Look what Gilly gave me. But you can't tell Harry I gave you the coat. Well, he'll think... Well, I'm, he'll, he'll know. Well, I'm, he'll think he knows that I... I, uh, I, I um, yeah, say something, Crouch. I pass. You yourself said that you, you didn't want to hurt Harry's feelings. But that was before I realized how mean he was. How much were you prepared to pay towards this coat? Uh, Four and a half thousand. Uh, yes. And that was just for an outside chance in the distant future. I wouldn't put it quite like that. And Harry wouldn't even pay 500. For a dead cert every night. Goodbye, darling. You are not going with that coat. I am not going without it. You are not leaving the building. All right, darling. If you say so, I shall stay with pleasure. Now, Jenny, the coat. No more of your nonsense. I shall stay till I get my own way. Miss oh, dear, it's a fruitless attitude. You think so? Yeah, the customers will call, and they'll see nothing unusual in a pretty girl sitting on the couch. Ah. So stay as long as you like. That is, if you, if you don't mind being ignored. <laughs> We men, we don't give way to feminine blackmail. <laughs> no. You're in the course of a varied, and if I may say, not an interesting life. <laughs> so many women have tried to score off Gilbert Bodley. None, I'm happy to say, but none have so far succeeded. So, come along, Crouch, come along. Business as usual. What? Yes. Right, Tippers, Tippers, where are you? Come along, Tippers, please. Let's have a little efficiency. What? Yeah. Tippers, come on. Ah, that what? Stop it, Crouch. Stop it. Stop it, Crouch. Now, um, is there anything I should be looking into, Tippers? I see. Yes. Yes, all right. Well, take this down, will you? Dear Lady Dixon. Dear bloody hell! <laughs> Jenny, your clothes. For, for God's sake, do something. All right, darling. Where are you going? What, 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 what are you doing? Just going home. Stop, oh, Mr. Bodley. Janie. I thought you wanted me to leave without the coat. Please, Mrs. McMichael, come away from that drafty keyhole. There, the, the coat. Quick. The coat. Who is it? Miss Tipdale. You can't come in. I beg your pardon? You, um, what, what do you want? Wait. What do you want? Uh, uh, Lady Dixon's letter. Yeah, well, open it. Open it. No, you were corresponding with her. Yeah, with, with a woman of 80? Get out, Tippers. Is this all you wish to say to her? What? Dear Lady Dixon, bloody hell. Brief and to the point. Now, off you go. Off you go. Come on. Now, Janie, I'm prepared to overlook everything if you be reasonable and go. Of all. Indeed she is. Crouch, you're raving mad. Stark raving Crouch. For God's sake, Janie, show us a little pity. No, don't show us that, Crouch. Do I detect a note of panic creeping into that hard, cynical firmness? Panic? Never. 